Talking today to Mark Kaplan, the director of The Village Under the Forest. Mark, this documentary, what's, what's the central story of it? The documentary is, uh, tells the story of a former Palestinian village which was destroyed in 1948. And the remains of the village have been covered over by a um, constructed forest, purposely cultivated forest, by the Jewish National Fund, whose mandate since 1905 has been to occupy as much land of Israel as possible and to hold it purely for Jews all over the world. And how did the film come to be made? A group of South Africans went to Israel on a fact-finding um, um, mission and um, they were from all faiths. And they, someone in Israel said, well, you're from South Africa, you should go to the South African forest. And while they were there, they stumbled on the ruins of this village. And um, they looked at each other and they thought, there needs to be a film. Mm. There are so many resonances for us South Africans um, who have gone through um, apartheid, through forced removals um, and other forms of, of social um, engineering. And um, Heidi Kronenbaum was one of those people. She brought the idea to me for a film. Um, she told me that the pennies that um, I and um, Jewish diaspora um, families tended to do, um, put your pennies into the blue box, the JNF blue box. You did this to celebrate um, something in the family like a birth, mm. like my father did in the birth of my daughter. And when Haley told me, well, actually, those pennies have contributed to an act of obliteration and are not simply an act of greening, mm. I, I, found a, I felt a profound sense of betrayal mm. and disquiet. Yes. And the film goes to the heart of it, and it, and it um, uses the village of Lubia and the forest, the South African forest, as a metaphor for a wider and ongoing process. And as we say in the film, 86 villages, former Palestinian villages, have been covered over by um, JNF forests. And those forests are in different country names. So you have a South African forest, but you have a UK forest, you have mm. a Norway forest, you have a Canada park, you have mm. the US forest, you have forests from all over the world. And so the film really speaks to people in that Jewish diaspora and says, look what's been done in your name and continues to be done in your name. And if you, if you are um, uncomfortable with this, speak out. And this particular village, Lubia, what, what was the history of it? Lubia is a village that goes back thousands of years. Um, uh, Saladin routed the Crusaders on the, that village land. Napoleon, when he kind of came to that part of the world, his forces were routed kind of outside that village. So there's a deep history um, and, and um, it included um, acts against the British occupation in the 30s. And so in the in 47, there were already kind of resistance to the um, possibility of a new uh, the Jewish state. And so Libya was a thorn mm. in, the, in, the, in, in, in the Israeli armory, if you like. I mean, they, they needed to um, clear Libya. Um, it was part of the Galilee that, that there was a heart of resistance. And um, three fierce battles took place before Libya was finally cleared. And in, in the film, you talked to both sides. You talked to the Haganah commander, who, who in a sense was part of the the winning Israeli, winning inverted commas Israeli force, and you talk to the defeated villagers. The film really brings together two very irreconcilable narratives, what the Jews call the War of Independence and the Arabs call the Nakba or the catastrophe. And um, the, what we try to do is make sense of the foundation um, myths, if you like, of, of, uh, that Haiti grew up with and then unpacks. Mm. said, I was told. And Haiti uh, grew up as a very orthodox Jew. Very orthodox, uh, very Zionist, and, and only realized in the making of the film, you know what, I remember I was in that forest when I first went to Israel, aged 18. Mm. Um, there's, a, there's a military museum nearby. She visited the, the museum. They've, the images of Haiti as an 18-year-old on, on a tank learning how to shoot. Mm. Um, so those images also filter into the film. So what did the Haganah commander tell you had occurred? 
Well, he talks about how they've, um, at the conclusion of these three fierce um, battles, um, he led a platoon and they basically, um, and very deliberately, um, uh, dynamited every single house. Mm. So they, they demolished the village essentially, so yeah. no one would come back. Absolutely. And in the film you have a historian who talks about memricide. What does he mean by that? There are two historians actually, two Israeli, um, they, they, they're kind of revisionist historians, so they're not liked in Israel. Mm. Um, but um, the one is, you know, the, um, um, at Oxford University and, and um, um, very difficult to argue against because the scholarship is, is very, very profound. Um, Ilan Papa is an Israeli historian who is basically forced out of Israel. Uh, death threats because of what he had written about and he talks about memricide and that's basically the manner deliberate manner of, of killing the, 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 the memory um, and, and the history of the land and replacing it very deliberately with a new memory with, with a new set of names and in this case names that are very close to the original names mm. but they, they're ways of saying well, we were here first. Mm. And the village becomes known as Lavi. Yes, and yeah. the whole district becomes Lavi, and, yeah. and there's a kibbutz Lavi, yeah. and the, many of those kibbutzniks, the older ones, will remember the battles, and they'll tell you, yes, we did terrible things, mm. but actually we also were the brunt of terrible acts. The villagers were particularly kind of violent um, opponents of ours. Yeah, so it was two sides. Yes. Yeah. And... Where is the film being shown and when was it released? It was released first in South Africa in a uh, festival called Encounters in June of this year, 2013. It did uh, win the Best South African Audience Award. Um, so that was... That was uh, pleasing. That was pleasing, mm. particularly because it's a controversial film. Mm. And we were very delighted because, for example, this is an instance where someone coming to the screening saw Haiti, knows Haiti, and, was, and shifted uncomfortably and said, oh, I, I'm dreading watching this film. And then she came out of the film, posted the Q&A, and she was in tears. And she said mm. to Haiti, thank you for giving me and my family the language with which to address these issues. Mm. So even people who are profoundly disturbed and don't kind of um, agree with the, all the sentiments that are expressed in the film, um, feel the need to, to confront uh, yeah, much to talk of, about this history. and to talk about and actually confront yeah. some of the kind of ideological um, bases upon which their, their whole idea of, of, of themselves vis-a-vis -vis Israel is founded mm. So where will the film be distributed? Where can people see it? Well they can go to our website which is www.filmunderforest.com and it's available uh, via downloads um, Journeyman TV um, is, is the international distributor, so you can go to German, Journeyman's website and get the film that way. How many downloads have you had so far? Well, it's largely, we've, we've, we've had to block the downloading because right. um, we are at this stage going to look, we're looking for festival releases. Mm. So we can't really download. You don't want to spoil those opportunities. Yeah, but we have, we have unblocked the Middle East. Yeah. And at the moment, um, the film is going to be showing at a festival in Israel. Um, it's an alternative festival. It celebrates the 47 partition. Um, and it's run by an organization called Zuchrot. And one of the people in our film is um, Eitan Bronstein, who is the founder of Zuchrot. And his work is to reconstitute uh, the memory, to bring it back.